Hi, welcome to our course on CSS Box Model. My name is Lawrence and I'm going to be your instructor for this course. I've been a web developer for over 15 years and I'm going to be sharing my knowledge with you in regards to CSS and how to work with CSS. Now CSS is one of the main cornerstones of web technologies and what we're looking at over here is just a sample site that we're going to be going through in order to better demonstrate how to work with and how to use the box model. We're going to be using brackets as our editor and we're also going to be using Chrome as our browser. And the way that CSS works is that the browser actually renders out the CSS. So it reads through the CSS code, that's the styling code, and it renders that out. And understanding how to work with the box model is one of the key aspects of understanding how CSS works. Essentially, every single element within your web page will have a box model. So we've got a graphical illustration of the box model here uh, within our display of web dev tools of Chrome. And we can see that as I make adjustments here, we, d we see it showing up here on the left hand side, but then we also see our adjustments being made here within our Chrome web dev tools. So we can see that essentially they have a graphical display of the box model and as we make adjustments we see that there are differences here that changes that are being made. And we can look at that in the center here is the main content area. We've got padding just outside of the content. We've got a border just outside of the padding and then finally we've got our margin. So those, those are the four main aspects of the box model and those are what we're going to be looking at in the next set of lessons. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the CSS box model. And essentially, the CSS box model wraps around every HTML element. It consists of margin, borders, padding, and also the actual element. So essentially, there are four different parts to it. And within this course, we're going to be looking at every one of those parts and looking at them in a little bit more detail. So over here on the left hand side, I've got my editor open and we're looking at a typical div and by default, so div doesn't really have any additional default styling in it other than taking up the entire block of code. There's really not much more within the div. So we're going to be adding in margins, borders, paddings, and talking about how we can do that within shorthand as well throughout the next few lessons. We're also going to be using Chrome as our web browser and the interesting thing about Chrome is it comes with dev tools and when you open up your dev tools and you select elements, the elements tab within your dev tools, you can actually see the box model of every one of your elements on your web page. So when I open this up, I can see that my content is 682 by 36. I've got a default margin around it by 16, I've got a border, I've got padding. And now when I apply those properties in CSS, we're going to see actual values attached to these. And we can also take a look at them and how it's actually laid out within the box model within our Chrome browser. There's a lot of, few, a lot of different examples of the box model. So typically we've got these illustrations here where we've got the more margin, border, padding, and content. So it's outlined essentially the same way and output essentially the same way as it is in Chrome. So we've got some more information here at w3.org. It will tell us more information about the box model, how to use it, and so on. And then, of course, we've got some more information here at Mozilla. So essentially, they've got the content width, the content height, padding, border, margin, and a really detailed explanation here about how to use it and how to apply the box model. So I'm going to quickly add in some styling into this element just to demonstrate in more detail what we can do and what we're going to be going through within the next few lessons. So essentially what I want to do in my CSS is I want to attach to my element with the ID of my box. So I'm just making that connection there and I'm going to give it a background color. So I'm going to give a typical maybe an aqua color so it really stands out in the page and the other thing that I want to add, so that we see within our box, 
So we're going to have a color all the way up to the border. Uh, so then we can add in some padding as well. So this is the shorthand for padding. And I want to maybe add in 10 picks of padding. And I'm going to add in a border. So I'm going to make it one pick solid and red. And then also I'm going to add in margin, which is on the outside of the border. And maybe we can go five picks on there. So I'm going to go out to my browser, refresh that. And now we see when I select this particular element within my PHP, we see we've got all of this taking place and we're able to, to see numerically within Chrome as well as a graphical representation of our CSS code. So if I open up this a little bit further, we can see that I've got my background color is applied there. So we see that background actually gets applied to the entire element up to the border. And then we've got padding, which if I disable this, we see that it removes from there. If I add enable the padding, we see that it adds in roughly a, about a small buffer, well, 10 pick buffer around the content. Uh, if we remove out the border, we see that it shrinks slightly, so the full dimensions sh shrink slightly because we've got a one pick border, solid red, and also the solid and the red disappear. And then of course we've got the margin, and so the margin is outside of the border. So if we had multiple elements here, the margin would be creating that buffer area in between all of the different elements. So then we can, if we shrink that down, if we get rid of it, we see that we immediately lose that margin that's surrounding our element. And one of the really neat things in Chrome is that you can actually make some adjustments right in the browser and you can actually see how things get displayed. So if I actually want to see what my border would look like if it was five picks or if I want to update that and change it to blue, we can see immediately what takes place and how we can visualize it within our display area. And of course, this isn't actually being saved into the source code. Uh, so in order to do that, there is a way within Chrome where you can connect your local files and be able to save them, or you could just simply make your changes up here and then transcribe them into your, your editor and save it in order to commit your changes. And then of course, we can update the, the margin as well. So I'm going to be showing you all of this and more in more detail in the upcoming lessons. In this lesson, we're going to look at more in depth how to work with all of our elements within our CSS. So every element has what's known as the box model. So they have padding, they have their content here in the middle. So this is that content and this is the amount of pixels that's taking up. So this blue area is the content, the padding is just outside of the content and it allows us to have some additional spacing above to the left to, to the right and below and then of course for the border we have those same options so that border allows us to contain the contents of that element so when we work with paragraphs we're going to see that uh, it's got these default paddings margins that are already built into it and as well some other elements. So we're gonna be able to actually see these when we apply the border. And then of course, lastly, we have a margin. So margins work outside of the element, uh, so outside of the bordered area. So if I wanted to move down entire element and I've got a border around it, I wanna place some spacing above it. Uh, so this is not spacing between the border and the content, this is spacing between the different elements, then that's where we'd use margin. So even though uh, there is, initially it does look like it's more complex than it needs to be, it's actually gonna be really straightforward. So let's just jump into this and start applying some margins, padding, and borders to our different elements in our HTML page. So open up our editor, and we're gonna take a quick look at our HTML code. So typically here for, maybe for the article, we wanna add in some additional Maybe I'll, I'll just add in a default div here that we can work with. And I'm gonna give this div a class because we wanna have multiple boxes, essentially. I'm gonna call it my box and I'm gonna add in some default content there. And 
duplicate this out. So we'll have several boxes of content. Now, when I'm designing websites, I love to use placeholder stuff. Uh, so as we've used here for the lorem images, we also have the ability to add in lorem text. And essentially, lorem text is just used for, for development purposes. So I don't have to write all of this kind of nonsense text that doesn't really make any sense. And sometimes you, it might look like if you copy and paste, it's way too repetitive. So that's where we use lorem text. And there's a lot of different lorem generators that are out there online. So a simple Google search of lorem generators will give you a whole bunch of options. And I usually like to use the ones that allow me to pick up the HTML tags, so the paragraph tags. And this is important if you're copy and pasting it in. Uh, so you don't always have the ability to when you copy and dump it in in all editors that it's going to take that formatting. Uh, so as we looked at earlier in HTML, if I was just to copy and paste this in, then uh, without these HTML paragraph tags, then we wouldn't uh, have it represented as paragraphs. So I'm going to cut down the number of words and maybe I'll just use characters. So I'm going to use 500 characters, so not overwhelmingly uh, with the amount of content that we're presenting in these boxes. And maybe even cut that down to maybe just be two and place that within the boxed areas and even cut it down even more. So this looks like something more of a manageable format that I can use. So I'm going to just simply, I can also do a select all here, copy it to clipboard. So they have that built in and then I can paste that. I can generate And again, uh, maybe just go down to 100 there, select all, copy to clipboard. And so now we've got some dummy content here that we can use. And place that in my divs. And yeah, that kind of turned out a little bit ugly. So I'm going to fix uh, the beautify of that to make it all align. But just to take a quick look, now we've got all of these boxes of content that are represented within our HTML code. I've just opened up brackets. I've got that same file, and the reason I like using brackets is it gives me this beautify right away. So when I'm copying and pasting, sometimes it doesn't look as presentable as I'd like it. Uh, so that's why I use, this, uh, use brackets more often than I use Notepad or any of these other editors, because I do have the ability to beautify and make it more readable. So now when I reload it over here, we see that now we've got a more readable format of our HTML page. So now we can apply styling to it. Finally, we can apply some styling to it. So the first thing that I want to do is select out that my box class. And I'm going to add in a border around it. So with borders, uh, just like with backgrounds, we actually have some options here to do uh, the entire border. So we can do, uh, this. you can see here, there's a lot of options that are even being presented for borders themselves. And with borders, we need three things with a border in order to make it work and make it happen. And we need to know how wide our border is going to be. So we've got border width. And I'm so used to doing the shorthand, so the shorthand is going to be border. So I'm going to show you that as well. It is important to understand that there is different ways of presenting borders. So there is this longer format, uh, which was used previously, but now you, you see for the most part people are using the shorthand. Uh, so we need to set a border width. And without a border style, we actually don't know anything about the border. So there are various styles for the border. Uh, so typically, if you just want a solid border, uh, you would indicate that the border style is solid. You also have options to do dotted. You can do double, uh, dotted, and a whole lot of different options for different styles. But generally speaking, maybe we want to just stick to a solid border. So we see that now this content gets presented with borders around it. And maybe I want to be more specific and we want to look at this later on as well. But I want to set these borders only to the paragraphs. And we see that the way that the paragraphs work is that we've got these 
margins that are around it. Uh, so essentially, and what I did here is I just opened up the editor here and so we can see how much margin is being applied between the different elements, the different paragraphs. We see that there's 16 picks that's being applied and now we've added in a border so we've got roughly a one pick border uh, so it's just rounding it down. We have no padding applied to it and we have our content size there. And this is available in each and every uh, Chrome. Uh, so all you have to do is open up the dev tools and then go to elements and you can see the different styles and when you select an element you can see the box model that's represented here within your editor or within your dev tools. So another thing that we might want to set with the borders is I'm going to get rid of this paragraph and we're going to look at this in more detail later on. So one other thing that I might want to set for my borders is I see that by default I've got black borders. So if I don't like black borders, I can change my border color. So not background, but border color. And now we just need to do our color as we've done before. So I'm gonna just keep it really simple and do red colors. So now when we refresh it, we see that we've got these red boxed borders around each and every one of these classes. So as I said, usually we're just doing the shorthand method for the border. You don't really see a lot of people doing with these uh, long formatted because with the borders you do need more than one property. So you do need the width, you do need the solid. You can skip out on the color, but um, you do need these values to be placed within the borders. Uh, so this is where we come to that border shorthand and we can really simplify this with just doing border so we do the width, we do that. In the previous lesson, we had looked at borders. So now we're going to look at margins and padding and the whole entire box model. So this is what's referred to as the box model in general. And it's important to understand the difference between margins and paddings. So even though they do sound the same, there are some real differences between them and how they get presented within the element. So let's open up our editor and apply some padding to our my box class. And with padding, just like with borders, we do have a lot of options. So maybe I'm gonna bring this down here or maybe place it here above and remove out some of the spacing here. So just like borders, we've got padding here where we just indicate padding. So we have some options here that Notepad is presenting us for padding. We've got a bottom padding and we can indicate this by picks. And this will give us 10 picks of padding at the bottom of each one of these classes. So pay, pay attention to the differences here that's going to show up when I refresh the page. So we see that at the bottom, after it finishes that inner content of our element, and I'm going to open this up a little bit further here so we can better understand and see that box model there. So now we've got padding that's being applied and actually I need to uh, select out that entire element to be able to better understand where that padding was being applied. So it wasn't being applied to the paragraphs but it was being applied to that entire container that my box div and we see that we've got our padding of 10. So well what if we want to apply some padding above our content and see here again this is the content when I hover over it with my mouse in DevTools we see that it gets updated within the visual area as well and so padding so if we want to do padding top so just like the name indicates we can specify top padding spacing same thing with padding and again I tried to go with that shortcut because I'm more used to just doing the shortcuts for these and then padding right. So I'm not going to spend too much time on these left and rights and stuff. Uh, so just show you that whenever we refresh it, now we've got padding 20, 10, 10, and 15. So maybe we should change one of these to 5 so that there is a differentiator. So as I probably, as you probably saw, I did one that was just called padding and I had closed off the colon there. Uh, so this is how we do the shorthand of the padding. 
and there are a number of different ways to do the shorthand in order to really specify your top, your bottom, your left, your right. Uh, so maybe if you want to do top and bottom or if you want to apply that same padding to each and every single one of those positions, we can apply padding uniformly across that entire element of 10 picks. So when I refresh it, now we've got padding 10 all the way around. But what if we only want padding of 10 on the top and bottom, and we want padding of 15 on the left and right? So we can do it within this type of format, where we refresh it, and now we've got top and bottom with 10, left and right with 15. And essentially, uh, if you're only putting in two values, then it defaults to this type of format. So top and bottom for the first value, left and right for the second one. So what if we add in another value? So our top, let's say we wanted 10, but we want to bring this one down to 5, but we want to keep left and right at 15. And shorthand allows us to do that as well, and allows us to set the top at 10, the bottom at 5, and the left and right at 15. And notice how this works is it works in, I like to think of it kind of like a clockwise order. So just as a clock hand would move along, we initially, if we only have one value, it takes all of these values as the clock hand moves along. Uh, the next one, if we have a default value for left and right, it's gonna take this value for the right of 15. And then if it holds that value, moves along, if there's another default value, it says, okay, well, this is a default value for the bottom or a value that's being set for the bottom. So it's going to reset that 10 to a 5. And then lastly, when it gets to the left hand or the left hand side, and if it doesn't have any default value in there, it just keeps that right hand side value. So now we see 10, 15, and 5. And then lastly, of course, if we want to set a value for the left hand side, this is the way that we would set that last left hand value by doing this. So this is shorthand for padding and it really does save a lot of time. Uh, so it takes a little bit of getting used to it, but just think of it like a clock moving around a clock and holding these values. And if it's got another one, then it rewrites, overwrites that hold value and continues along through that clock progression as it hits additional values within the, the shorthand method. So in the upcoming lesson, we're gonna look at margins. And margins and padding, they're very similar the way that they function uh, and how we present our values and properties. Uh, so again, it's gonna have that shorthand method, but we're gonna really quickly run through the longhand and then go to the shorthand to basically better illustrate how we're presenting out our content. So that's coming up in the next lesson. Now we're gonna look at margins within our box model. So with margins, we do have some options here to really, um, to really build out with shorthand, just as we did with padding. So we've got the same thing here. We've got margin, bottom, left, right, and top. So I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on this, and I'm gonna just maybe copy and paste that out so that we can better illustrate how to work with uh, margins. And this should be reversed. So we still have our padding there. And instead of So we can do literally that same format where we've got margin, bottom, margin, top, margin, left, and margin, right. So I'll show you how this is going to work. And then uh, going to remove out these maybe just remove that one for now. So when we refresh it, we see that now we've got these margins. And immediately what happens with the margins is that we get this division between all of these uh, separate boxes. So we've got some division here where we can see that there's spacing now between the top and bottom of those boxes. And when we look at our box model, we see now we've got all of these margins now in place. So this is a way to uh, to create some visual spacing between different containers within your HTML. 
And just like we had our margin or padding shortcuts, we can also do the margin shortcuts. So if we want to have our default margin to be 20 throughout, uh, well, all we need to do is set it as a default 20. And so now it's 20 on top, left, bottom, and, or top, right, bottom, and left. And then just like we did with the shorthand for padding, we can set 10 picks, and maybe I'll do five picks here for the bottom, and do I'll do 25 for the left-hand side. So now when I refresh it, I got all of my margins in place. So one thing I want to do as well is I want to set my background color so that we can better illustrate how this content is being presented. So I'm going to make it a really kind of light gray there, so three E's. And we can see how the background color works. Uh, so looking at what we did earlier, where we had these borders, we had our padding and our margins, we can see that the actual padding is still encased within that element, so all the way up to the border, and the way the background works is it applies that value all the way to the border. So this allows us to have background colors and it takes up that entire spacing. So if we were just to simply remove out these borders, it's going to look entirely different. That Now we've got this sectioning and this spacing and we can, without borders, we can tell that these are different sections or different containers of our HTML code. I'm going to go ahead and add that border back in, refresh the page, and uh, just run through this in a little bit more detail. So as we had looked at before, so it's each and every one of these paragraphs that actually has its own uh, default margins and uh, padding there. So now if I break it down into here, we see that we've actually been able to overwrite those defaults. So if I was to maybe set this padding all the way to zero, we'll see what happens here with the paragraphs. So remember, these, these styles are being applied to the paragraphs only. So when I apply that, we see that it still looks the same. So it's not actually the paragraphs that have padding, it's that they have margins built in. So when I remove out those margins, we see that those paragraphs no longer look like paragraphs, they're not being represented as paragraphs, and there's, we've removed out those default styling values that are inherent within our HTML paragraphs. And now this can be done with CSS with any one of your default elements within HTML, so you can change up all of their default look and feel and presentation just by updating CSS. And this is one of the reasons why I like to use I like to use Chrome because of the dev tools and you can really uh, work with your CSS, see how it gets presented. We see that we've got all of this information. So in addition to our standard borders and so on, we've got all of this ability to add in border image sources, uh, a whole bunch more information that we can do with borders, and same with margins. Uh, even though there's not as much as we can do with borders, we still have a lot of options here with our margins. So we can update our margins as well, and we see that when we open this up, this is where it's being applied, that margin's being applied, so they all are at zero, and then we've got our width. So if we were to update our CSS width to be a fixed width, this would update as well. And another thing here is that you can really work quite a bit with uh, adjusting the colors in your CSS. So if you want to adjust what's being represented here, I can hide out those borders and I can see how it gets represented. I can hide out that margin. We see we go back to our defaults. So it's like it wasn't even there and wasn't even presented. And this is a great way to work with dev tools in order to better fine tune how your CSS is getting presented. And then of course, uh, then implement it within your source code. And that's uh, within elements, 
uh, within styles and then all you have to do is on a Windows machine you go and you right click and it's control shift I to do the inspection on that element. CSS also gives us an option to round borders. So if we're not happy with just having these square rectangular type of borders shapes for our divs, we can apply some rounding to it. And the way that we do that is, again, we go into our selection and this is another border property and this is called border radius. And this is a relatively new one. So if I want to do a radius of 10 picks, if I refresh it, we see that we get this rounded edging around the corners. And radius works in the same way as the other shorthand properties for borders. And here is a really good example that Mozilla created that tells you more information about the shorthand properties because the border radius is a lot more difficult to explain. But when you look at a visual diagram like this, it makes a lot more sense. Whereas the shorthand for the regular border is top and bottom, left and right. So then we in, we can add as we add more values for that property. We see that we get different effects. And the same thing for the border radius. So if we want to create a radius that was only for this corner and that corner, all we would need to do is add an additional value into our shorthand here. So I could do something like zero picks. And what do you think this is going to look like now? So now when I've gotten a 10 and I've gotten a zero, so going into our code, we refresh it and we see that it works where we've got this rounded, this one isn't, then the next one is rounded and then this one isn't. So it works in the same format. And it does take a little bit of time to kind of play around with all these different values and see what you can make it do. In addition to picks, we're also presented with EM as a way of setting a value for a border. And essentially EM is a more dynamic relationship to the current font. So one EM is the default font size, and then two EM would be twice the default font size. And then over here, we've got a value of three EM, so this would be three times the current font size. And usually the default font size, unless you've set a different font size, is going to be about 16 picks or 14 picks. When we're making a decision whether to use picks or whether to use EM, just remember that picks is an absolute unit. So when we're doing picks here, then we're setting it as an absolute size. So I'm going to just update this to 3 EM so that we can see what the difference is. And I'm going to update this one to be maybe 42 picks. So I go back out and refresh it. We see that roughly it's around the same, that the 3EM is roughly around 42 picks. Not exactly, but it's very close to that. And that's because the picks is about 16 as an absolute value. And there really isn't any right or wrong when selecting EMs or percentages. So the EMs are just based on the surrounding font size. So this is where we get these settings. So again, this could vary and this is not a set size. So it would be vary in relation to the surrounding text. Uh, so we could also do something like percentages as well. And percentages are also an un they are also a changing unit, so it's in relation to depending on how much height and width we have a variable within the parent, so then this could fluctuate as well. So we can set this as a percentage. So if we want to set it as, I'll just update this one, and or maybe I'll add in another one. So if we want to do something like 5%, if we refresh it, so we see that to 5%, this should change depending on how much space we have available to us. 
So we see that there is slightly some change because we're on 5%, so it's not as evident. And again, when it comes to determining EM picks or percentages, this is based on the actual scenario. So going back to Mozilla's reference here, uh, if we go down, we see that we've got borders and then the border shorthand margin and padding and the shorthand for those as well. This is a good reference that you can use in order to reference out all of these different variations and the differences between the shorthand and long type format, longhand format.